Okay, here we have quite an oddity. Um, it's an Ansiphone KH85 answering machine. Now, probably everyone's just familiar with answering machine that you plug into the phone line and that's it. Um, here's the badge, um, serial number, a little, little focus, 108819, I believe. It was originally sold by Comsec in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and we also have the original box for it as well. But this was from the mid to late 60s and back then when the Bell Network was still um, together before it was um, liquidated you were not able to plug anything into your telephone line. The telephones were either hardwired or had the um, four-pronged plug instead of a modular jack. All the telephones were owned by the Bell system and you could not modify them in any way. So this is a fairly ingenious device in that it records will it'll answer your phone for you play an outgoing message and record an incoming message all without use all by using the actual phone and how this works is underneath the telephone here you can see that little raised area is an induction coil that senses when the ringer is operating these little arms here will actually lift the phone up and the unit will play the outgoing message which comes there's a speaker down in the cabinet about right here and the sound comes up through this little perforated grill to the mouthpiece and um, then the conversation or the incoming message is recorded through this induction coil that goes around the earpiece of the telephone and that wire goes down through here and is plugged into the to a jack in the back here so um, and I'll take it apart and show you a little bit later but let's power it up and show how it works okay first of all you can see the switches on here we have the power on and off um, volume control absent light which I'm not quite sure I don't have the manual for this but I did find the patent for it and you can see here patent was filed July 8th, 1963 and it was granted on April 2nd 1968 patent number three three seven six three nine zero and I've been able to figure out a little bit about that a little bit about it from that and as well as how to route the tapes in it this is an internal view of it and we'll get to that but here we have confirm which is to play back your outgoing message message which is to, to record your in outgoing message sorry listening plays back the message tape for the um, incoming messages and record allows it to function as a recorder a recorder to um, either a recorder or a speaker to either broadcast or record your telephone conversation there's a simple tape ending tape end indicator test button a jack for an external speaker and jack for a monitor speaker and this select this switch here selects whether when it's in the record or amp setting either to record your conversation or to amplify it over the speaker um, 
And this center setting, when it says to absent, is when it is set for um, for ant to auto answer. Okay, so what we're going to do is switch to confirm. We're just going to play the outgoing message here. It took it took me about maybe three four hours to get this thing to actually work. Um, I don't know how long it had been sitting, not used, but there's a few parts missing, and we'll get to that. But Okay, and we're showing it at the end of the tape. Let's see if I can adjust. That's a red light and the neon orange indicator. But we'll see if this will work. Okay, so that worked. And um, the outgoing tape is shot. <laughs> I had to, I was, um, had to splice it together a couple times and shorten it because when I had originally spliced it, it was too short. So then I had to cut some down, cut it down some, and yeah. Um, but we'll get to that when I show you the inside. But let's turn it on in auto answer and we'll show the operation of this sucker and I will give myself a call here <laughs> it's not gonna work probably okay try this again fail. Alright, I'll be right back. Got to see what it, what this thing's doing. Okay, so I think I know what the problem is. It was working fine before. I don't know why it stopped working all of a sudden when it was just sitting here. Um, I'm going to try calling one more time and then I'm just going to tap the relay because that was what seems to be the problem. Or could be a failing capacitor, or who knows what, but let's give it a shot. Hello, thank you for calling. I currently cannot come to the phone right now. Please leave a message after the tone, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Hello, I guess I j must have just missed you. Um, give me a call back whenever you get this. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay, now, other thing is, for some reason, it doesn't shut off after it has started recording. It doesn't go back on hook. Um, so, let's just manually. Okay, so now we're going to, there is no fast forward on this thing, so you got to run the tape the whole way through. So I'm going to do that and see if we actually recorded anything on there. Okay, so while that is playing through the rest of the tape, we'll take a look at what's inside the front panel here. Um, what we've got are a relay, relay banks, bank of, or a bank of relays, and that drives the different motor controllers, the um, the handset lifter, and um, the actuators for the um, tape rollers and everything. And right above that is a removable board, which I believe is the control circuit for the um, amplifier. Or it's not the amplifier, the induction coils. I'm not positive. Um, and like I said, I didn't have a manual, so I'm just kind of guessing on this. But over here, 
we've got the fuse up on top there then sensitivity and a time adjustment and I believe that the sensitivity is for the um, for the induction coils and the time should be how long of a message it will record but again I'm not positive I have to read through the patent and see if it says anything about that and then there's a C-O-N-T and fix um, which I believe I'm just taking well I'm taking a guess actually that it's continuous recording and fixed time recording which your time is adjustable with the bottom adjustment and right above that I don't know if the camera can see it um, there's a little tiny circuit board with a wire going to it that says TP which I believe is test point for what I don't know um, but okay so the tape has stopped and this this is a, just a little little hinge door that's normally held on by two screws there so we've got tape end at the end of the tape and say you come home and you want to play back your messages okay so it's set, set on absent which is the answering setting switch to listening which of course it would start it would automatically start when um, to get to the end of the tape gets to the end of the tape tape end light comes on hit test button to advance it past the contact on the tape and let's Hello. see I guess I you must have just missed you um giving a call back whenever you get that talk to you later bye so actually it doesn't sound sounds pretty decent actually um considering we've got probably like 20 30 year old tape in this thing um so we'll shut it off and then we'll take the phone off and see what's under the cover here see what's under the hood okay so here's where you see is the induction coil to pick up the ringer and where the speaker is there's two little thumb screws. Now, as I was saying before, there's a few things missing on this. There's supposed to be, a, right where this hole is, there's supposed to be a little latch that, it's like just a little hook that will pull this to about here for a neutral position for the tape rollers. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that is. I'm guessing it's probably if you're not using the machine for extended periods of time you won't end up with a flat spot on the roller um, as you can see there's the two tape rollers right there under normal conditions the here you can see that would move those rollers a little bit but anyway so there's the uh, erase in the recording head for the outgoing message and I had to actually put a pe little piece of felt weather stripping on there because the pads that were on were supposed to be on it weren't there anymore and Here's the record and playback heads the for roll, the, the little clips that are supposed image. to hold the rollers on are missing on that roller, this one, and this one. And there is supposed to be where this hole is, there is supposed to be another roller where the tape would actually come out like this instead of just being wrapped around the sensor like that, which this right here and that little thing are the end tape end of tape sensors and um, as you can see on the well let me move it a little bit here you can see on the 
outgoing message tape there's a little piece of metal contact um, which is actually just a little piece of aluminum duct tape but that is actually what sends the signal to start or stop the tape or switch from incoming to out or outgoing to incoming okay so this is just a um, tape magazine for the incoming tape it's a continuous loop and again where the splice is on that it has a little strip of that aluminum tape this is a, not actually the original spool the original one would have been a little bit bigger than that um, and it operates similar to an 8-track tape. It pulls the tape out of the center, actually, I believe we can, I believe the cover comes off of this, yes, there. It pulls the tape out of the center of the spool and pulls it around the loop and then it goes back onto the outside of the spool. Okay, and the outgoing tape is just a small, again, continuous loop that goes around, down through here. This is a little tensioning roller, which isn't doing much because, like I said, the tape is kind of messed up. But it goes down around this roller, back around that center roller. It's supposed to go back down around this center roller then back around the bottom roller to this roll to that bottom roller and then up to the head assembly um, but we'll power it up here now and show a quick demonstration of I'm just gonna run the test on it of how it would work how it looks like working okay hit test oops that was because I had pushed the um, contact past the um, sensor. So let's try that again. Hello, thank you for calling. I currently cannot come to the phone right now. Please leave a message after the tone and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. And then it switches and starts driving the tape reel to record. Okay, so we don't really have to do anything else with that. Um, but another problem that I was having with this was that the motor was just randomly, it wouldn't start sometimes. So I oiled it and it still wasn't starting. And well, I think part of the problem was, oops, I don't want the tape falling out. But this is inside it, and there is, you can see the speaker. Um, part of the problem is this motor casting, the lower, or the back casting of the motor, the front one looks fine, but the back casting of the motor is all, almost looks like it's dry rotted, actually, but it's completely cracked. I'll see if we can focus on that. See all the little hairline cracks on that. And you can also see where the oil is actually soaked from the bearing through the casting. Um, so I don't know if there's any way I can repair that or try and fit a different motor in there. But nothing much to look at in here. Just capacitors. There's the power, power transformer. Yeah, that's about it. There's the capstan flywheel and the belt going to the motor. But there we have it. Ansiphone model KH85 from probably about 1960, 1965, somewhere around that era, era of time. There we go. Thanks for watching.